Hello and welcome to Thought for July the 25th. Our readings are 2 Samuel chapter 11, Jeremiah chapter 15 and Matthew chapter 26. And our thought is, not as I will, but as you will. Today we read the account of the dreadful last 24 hours or so in the mortal life of our Lord Jesus. Yes, he was mortal, otherwise his death was only a sort of mirage. His agony of mind in the Garden of Gethsemane shows he knew what awaited him. It is possible he reasoned as he prayed to his father that his father's will could be the same as with Abraham when he was willing to sacrifice Isaac and at the last moment his action was stopped. Genesis 22 verses 10 to 12. With what utter urgency of mind Jesus prayed, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Matthew 26 verse 39. And this clearly shows Jesus had a separate will to his father. He was not an automated son. The theory of latter centuries that the father and the son are co-equal, co-eternal, etc. is pure human theology and is false. Many scriptures make this plain, especially Hebrews chapter 5 verses 5 to 9. There are several lessons that flow from this, especially the lesson for us on the foundation purpose of our lives and what our will should decide as to the paths open to us in pursuing our ambitions in life. It is essential they are made with a clear appreciation and acceptance of true godly principles. Sometimes there are critical lessons to be learnt. We saw the lesson Peter learnt in a mind of extreme anguish. He had brash self-confidence in declaring he would never deny his Lord, as we read in verse 33. It can be that when we seek relaxation from the battles of life, as David did, and as we read today in 2 Samuel chapter 11, verses 1 to 2, that we let down our defences and our clear vision of our relationship with our Saviour is dulled. There is a proverb about idle hands. There should be one, and probably is, about roving eyes and minds. There has never been an age when human minds and eyes have been faced with such a multitude of opportunities to rove. All around us are those who indulge in ungodly ways, and each year it seems this occurs to greater and greater degrees. Let Jeremiah's trials and his words we also read today be examples to us. I did not sit in the company of revelers. Because your hand was upon me, your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Yahweh, Elohim of hosts. Chapter 15, verses 16 and 17. Is Jesus your Lord? Are you called by his name? Then let us follow Jeremiah's example. Well, thank you once again for joining us for Thought for the Day where together we can open up the pages of God's Word, knowing that Word to be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path.